Hey everyone, me Mudahar, and you might be wondering, what? Yeah, I'm here to rectify the issues with the last cancelled gaming video Zahid put up. I watched it and realized some facts were blatantly wrong, among other numerous things, so I'm here to give an unbiased and factful video on Ura Zelda this time. Now, before we delve into Ura Zelda, we gotta take a look at the 64 disk drive, or 64DD for short. The disk drive was an add-on to the N64 and would allow the 64 to use magneto-optical disks with a capacity of 64 megabytes. The device was meant to be an answer to Sony's PlayStation and would even have rewritable storage so that it could connect with N64 games and provide extra levels, mini-games, and even store personal data. It could even connect to the internet, or RANnet. That would be Nintendo's online service at the time. RANnet would allow players to play against each other, play unreleased games, beta test, and even browse the internet. Pretty revolutionary stuff at the time, and was even somewhat popular. However, the 64DD failed, and it sold only 15,000 units, and it only had a total of 9 games. Because of this failure, the add-on never got released outside of Japan. Moving on though, Nintendo was working on two expansions for Ocarina of Time, due to its wild success in the gaming market for the 64 disk drive. One was called Ura Zelda, and one was called Zelda Gaiden. Ura Zelda would be an expansion to Ocarina of Time and provide players with new dungeons and gameplay features, but due to the failure of the 64DD it would never be released at all. Ura Zelda was a, originally a patch, ranging from 32 to 64 megabytes, and couldn't actually be released on a normal cartridge alongside an actual, the actual Ocarina of Time game. And the way you would start this was basically by putting the Ura Zelda disc into the 64 disk drive running the original Ocarina of Time game and selecting the options from the in-game menu to start the Ura Zelda game, or expansion. There were several additions to Ura Zelda. One big one was the Unicorn Fountain Dungeon, which was an all-new dungeon. The other expansion, Zelda Gaiden, would eventually become its own standalone game called The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask turned out to be a commercial success, and it sold approximately 314,000 copies in its first week, and ultimately sold 3 million worldwide, and gained universally positive reviews for, a, for the use of its graphics and complex story as well as a 3 day cycle for the game. I don't have anything to add for Majora's Mask simply because I haven't played it. I used to have a Playstation instead of a Nintendo 64 so I really missed out on the whole Zelda series back, and only recently finished Ocarina of Time on the Nintendo 3DS so I can't really say much for Majora's Mask, since again I haven't played it. But from what I hear, it's a genuinely good game, and has brought good additions to the Zelda franchise, as well as Ben. But what happened to Ura Zelda? I mean, Zelda Gaiden became its own game, right? Ura Zelda in all respects was scrap, and however the game was partially released, if you can call it that. If you happened to pre-order Wind Waker, you would have received a disc that contained the Ocarina of Time Master Quest, or if you own the 3DS version, you would unlock it after you beat the main quest. Now the Master Quest isn't really Ura Zelda, because it doesn't, have a, it doesn't have a lot of new content. Master Quest on the GameCube was really just revamped dungeons with a higher difficulty curve, and some items that were once optional were now mandatory to finish the game. But then again, that's what Ura Zelda would have been, in a sense. And Master Quest is generally believed to be Ura Zelda's successor. This would be the end of the Ura Zelda expansion, and would be one Zelda game or expansion that fans would never be able to play. Now this is something I wanted to add to cancelled gaming and give my ideas of how the game could possibly come out. I for one own and love my Nintendo 3DS, and one of the games I picked up was Nint Ocarina of Time 3DS. I never played the game in my past and decided I could play the game on my 3DS with its revamped visuals and it's a fun game and I could see what I missed out on. But now you've already seen some 3DS games get DLC. So I personally think Nintendo could port Ura Zelda and sell it on the 3DS eShop as DLC for Ocarina of Time for a reasonable amount of money. In fact, how much would you pay for Ura Zelda DLC and if you would even buy it? Nintendo could just release it on the Wii Online Store or the Wii U Online Store. There's even a group that is dedicated to restoring the project and are building it by themselves. 
They're called the Ura Expansion or the Ura Project, I'm not sure, but the link to their website is in the description below. And they're currently building it off the Majora's Mask engine and are including new dungeons, features, and even a new protagonist. Something to be excited about, I'm, I'm sure. Now I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Cancelled Gaming and its proper revision, and I've learned something about Ura Zelda and even the Nintendo 64 disk drive. This has been another episode of Cancelled Gaming, and if you like what you saw, then like, comment, and subscribe. This is me, Mudahar, from Some Ordinary Gamers, and I'm out.